The Victorians gave us a lot. Paddle steamers and petrol, Christmas cards and concrete. They also gave us a lot of the invasive vegetation that we see on our green and brownfield sites today. One of these Victorians, Philip Franz von Seibold, a German traveller and botanist, took a trip to Japan looking for pretty new plants that he could market and sell. Amongst the plants he brought back was Raynutria japonica. The plant was later to be known as Fallopia japonica, or Japanese knotweed, and became one of the most feared species in the UK. Japanese knotweed was originally popular with the horticulturalists of the day. The low maintenance, impressive growth rate of 5 cm to 10 cm per day, and its large imposing size made it an impressive and much written about plant. But it wasn't just the horticulturalists and Victorian gentry that saw the potential of this plant. The industrialists looked at the deep and dense rhizome system and saw potential in this to offer stability and cover on a number of the new canals, rivers and railways that were being constructed. All was well in the world for a while, things moved on and nobody really thought about Japanese knotweed. Except, the gardeners had realised that the plant grew and grew and grew and outcompeted any of the native plants in their gardens. So they dug it up and got rid of it to keep it in check. The railway managers were noticing that there was now knotweed where there was no knotweed, and that trips in their trains now consisted of endless views of miles and miles of the plant. The waterways managers realised that water didn't kill the plant, and that in times of flood the rhizomes would travel downstream and recolonise in shallow areas. They all also realised that with the dense nature of the plant, not much else grew. Suddenly, this plant wasn't as wonderful as everyone thought it was. But even then, it wasn't too serious. After all, it's not just Japanese knotweed that grows everywhere. But then, the gardeners started noticing little shoots of Japanese knotweed popping up in their paths. The rail managers started noticing knotweed growing out of their bridges. The waterways managers started noticing knotweed pushing through river defences. Alas, it was true. After extensive research, it was proven that not only could Japanese knotweed outgrow most native species, it also had the ability to cause serious structural damage if left unmanaged. Keen to protect the UK, the regulators sat down in 1981 and the Wildlife and Countryside Act was born. This made it an offence to plant, sell or spread Japanese knotweed. It was here that the battle really began. There were only a few contractors in this time, a select group that had a range of solutions that at the time were effective in the fight. They could spray it, quite often killing in one growing season. They could dig it up and bury it. They could dig it up and take it away to licensed landfill. And once again, all was good in the world, and the fight against knotweed seemed to be being won. But then, house builders and developers started noticing that some of the knotweed was regrowing. They no longer had the time to wait, and landfill costs were becoming expensive. Then in 2008, everything changed. There was a buzz in the country. We had just won the Olympic Games, and they were coming to London. The site had been selected and construction was ready to start. But, oh no, the site was full of Japanese knotweed. Due to the sensitive nature of the site, there was to be no burial, no chemical use, and strictly no removal from site. What were they going to do? It was then they heard of the work being done by Mark Prout, as a former project manager at the West Country Rivers Trust and a board member of the Cornwall Knotweed Forum. He had been regarded as the pioneer of a new technology that removed rhizome from the knotweed using processing technology. Two years and 200,000 metres cubed later, mechanical screening had been proven to be an effective solution. So how does it work? Well, it's quite simple really. All the Japanese knotweed is removed from the ground using standard machinery. This is then placed into a central hopper and distributed along a series of conveyors. Any material that contains rhizome of the plant is then sent to a picking station, where trained operatives remove all vegetation and place into bags for disposal off-site. Once the process is finished, you're left with two grades of usable material that can be reintegrated into the site, and a volume of finer material which is placed under a 600mm capping layer. But, after doing this a number of times, we noticed some problems. The screening unit needed to be delivered on very big pieces of equipment. It needed a lot of room on site. The solution? 
Well, the solution was to try and find a low-impact, efficient portable screening unit that could process smaller volumes of material using the same principle as the larger, proven screening units. So the owners of Ebsford Environmental, Mark Prout and Nick Hartley, put their heads together and the EnviroScreen 2020 was born. Based on American units, the EnviroScreen 2020 has been heavily modified and fitted with bespoke conveyor systems. Operated and managed by our in-house teams, we are able to process up to 600 cubic metres of material per week. So what does this mean for you? It means you can build what you need to build quickly, regardless of if that's a school, offices or housing. You save money, and you are specifying a sustainable greener solution which can count towards BREEAM credits, and give you a well-deserved pat on the back. As with all our solutions, you get our insurance-backed warranty, so you can rest assured you are covered even if something does go wrong. We are also founder members of INSA, which are the association and trade body for the invasive vegetation sector. And of course, we have all the usual accreditations. And just as important, at Ebsford we like to be professional, but with a smile on our face. So whether it's initial contact, consultancy and surveys, or our site teams, you know you'll always get a great service and a big smile along the way. And if you do need us, you can always call us and we'll be delighted to help. So thanks for listening, and we hope you've enjoyed learning about Knotweed and our EnviroScreen. We'd love to hear from you in the future, so here are our contact details.